Hello folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today I want to tell you everything I know about cracks. Careful now, they don't have all day. I, I could go on all day about cracks, but I'm going to try to make it easy for you folks. Uh, we're here because um, the fella in the rear, we did the color code a couple years ago, and a downspout failed, so they're putting a new downspout which put a little hole in the stucco for us, so I stopped by and I looked at it, and I noticed the hairline crack right here. And there's one there that the camera won't show because I can barely see it. But let me, let me show you folks this, if the camera will show it. You see this crack, it starts right here. It's a hairline crack, like the hair on your head. And here you can see the fiber mesh tape. There is fiber mesh tape. Under here is this stuff here because when we did this house, we did the lath, at lath path inspection. We did the scratch coat. Two days later, we did the brown and we hydrated it. That means we saturated it with water over and over. Then I had the homeowner for two solid weeks just out here hosing it down. And he says, oh, Kirk, uh, how long do I got to do this? I said, just keep doing it until the water saturates both coats, hits the paper and drips off harmlessly. And the reason is we want the walls to contract and expand and we want to develop cracks. Well, we did develop the cracks that are normal. And this fiber mesh tape right here that I can still see is the result of us putting fiber mesh tape prior to the color coat. Now, we're in Alameda. Let me, a quick explanation of things that are somewhat important if you're going to do color coats or any of this kind of concrete tile in Alameda. Alameda is landfill, it's sand. Um, they did 30,000 houses at Bay Farm Island and about 15 years ago I was reading the journal and it said, gee, there's 25 to 50 different general contractors, 30 different subcontractors as stucco guys. Every house cracked. Why? It's because the ground moves. If you were to talk to say Ken Gutleben, a 40 year foundation specialist, or say um, Tom Carroll, they'll tell you, if you dig down within a foot to three, sometimes four, there's rivers everywhere. And so what's happening is water is moving under the ground, and which cre creates friction. We also don't have a drip screed here, which is not a big deal. Drip screeds weren't mandatory until 1975 or 80. Anyhow, so we're locked in everywhere. The tile's locked in, so everything is locked in. And the main reason this wall cracked right here and not the rest of the house is because this door right here. This is a solid oak door. And every time you open and close this, it just doo -doo 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 -doo, it shakes the house. We did one at Sears Point Raceway 25 years ago. And the fellow who called me, I stuccoed his house and I stuccoed the uh, three-story watchtower. And he said, Kirk, we've got such a crack here. I need you to come look at it. When I went and looked at it, they had a wheelchair access chair door to it and when you open the door and let it go it would it was a steel door and it would hit the wall and, go, doo -doo 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 -doo, and just shake the shit out of that wall so we had a nasty crack that you could stick two quarters in that's how big that crack was on that wall and i told him well vibration causes cracking i'm gonna tell you guys a few other things before i um, go on with this and explain what i'm gonna do here um can we put expansion joints i went to a seminar uh, I was the only stucco guy there and about 30 different uh, architects and the architects were getting into the fact that, well, gee, um, you should put expansion joints. And yes, we did the car wash in 1989 at South Shore in Alameda. I stuccoed that one. And when I got the prints, I thought, gee, there's no expansion joints. It's a commercial property. I opened my big mouth. They installed uh, 100 or they put on the papers at least 100 expansion joints. If you have a wall every 10 foot with no openings, then it's required, especially with commercial property. On residential such as this, it would look kind of ugly or uh, nasty. Uh, it would look commercialized, so they're not necessary for um, um, residential houses. However, even if we put an expansion joint, now granted, I couldn't put an expansion joint this way, it'd look retarded. And if I put one here, it would still look goofy. But even with expansion joints, like the car wash, it did crack too. Of course, it didn't help that when they did the concrete around the whole car wash, they buried my weep screed. And when you bury the weep screed, the weep screed acts as an expansion joint, 
as something to stop to and for water to go through the stucco and weep or drip harmlessly down. That being said, expansion joints, they're okay for commercial property and I encourage that. For residential homes, I don't. But if it's on the prints, we'll do it. Getting back now to what I'm here to do. There's, uh, I used this mesh tape earlier and again, you can see the mesh tape right here and I can see the crack where it reappeared. You really have to look to see it. But I'm here to do the rear and I told the fella, you know what? I'm not, I don't like that crack right there. It's the front of your house. I'm going to fix that. And he says, gee, Kirk, you don't have to. You told me all about it uh, when you did it. And we hosed it down. We understand what you were saying. But I thought, man, it's your front door, so we'll fix it. Now, if you start off with a one and a half inch tape, the next one should be a little bit thicker. And I'm using this next one, which is a lot wider because I don't want... I don't want to build up. Say like, and I, I do a lot of arbitration, guys. I do a lot of litigation where people call me and they say, Kirk, how come this happened? And I'll explain why things happen. Uh, then I can see the crack going this way here too. You folks, can you get a zoom in on that, Jay, by any chance? I mean, that's, that's such a hairline, but it shows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recoat this. and. And here's another tip, guys. As far as I've, I've read a lot of um, literature, and I always get emailed. I know I'm going to ramble on about stuff here. One of the emails I get is folks call me from all over the country, sometimes uh, further than that, out of uh, all over the world because of all of our YouTube videos. And one of the common questions I hear is, gee whiz, we did a, a scratch and a brown coat and the fellow says he's going to apply a, a mesh netting over the complete house to assure us this doesn't crack i said if you do that it will not crack they make this mesh tape like like this right here in four foot rolls that's just plastic so they make this mesh they make the four inch they make the six inch mesh and they also make four foot rolls and they make a panzer mesh, when I worked drive it, we would put the panzer mesh at the bottom of the hotels or hospitals. Panzer mesh is 10 times stronger and thicker than this. And panzer is named after the German tank. That's strong stuff. Anyhow, that so-called um, panzer mesh, we don't use that unless you go with a system like drive it. You apply styrofoam, then you put your panzer mesh and that panzer mesh, what we do first when I was union, we would apply an adhesive base coat, a cementitious one. Then we would put the, we'd lay out the sheets of the uh, panzer mesh. Then we'd put another coat on that. That's embedding that panzer mesh tape. And that's the drive it system guy here. We're doing a conventional three coats uh, stucco system. So anyhow, what I'm gonna point out to you guys is today, right now, all I'm going to do is put some mud over this mesh tape to adhere it. Do I need to put some adhesive underneath this? No, I don't. Here's what Jason just mixed me up. He mixed me up some color coat. And you say, how do, that color doesn't match. Well, here's how you get the right color. Okay, you wet a wall. Now, when that wall is wet, it darkens because this is a cementitious color finish. And this color is what we call Miami peach. Now, that's a pretty close match, and it took them about 15 minutes to match this. It's a La Habra color. Anyhow, I won't get into that detail. But here's what we do when we have some cracks. Now, I'm going to embed that mesh tape with more. And I've done this already once, but again, because we're in Alameda, and a hundred other things uh, that I could mention, we do have that crack that returned. Okay, so we'll take, we'll take a little bit of finish and we'll go over it. Now, notice one thing, guys, if you're... The majority of you folks will never ever call me for this because this is rare. This is only for those who email me from all over the country telling me, gee, I've had a guy do this and, and here's the result. Now, with this, I'm gonna float that too. 
So I'm going to float it in. Float this in. Meaning I want to give it the same texture as what's here because we can do two things here. I can come back and fog this in. Meaning I take color and I fog it in. Or I come back and I just respread the whole wall. This is a small wall, so I am going to come here and respread the whole wall. So today, all I'm doing is this. This is it. Uh, and because I'm talking and working at the same time, I could lose some of this. But anyhow, guys, I want to prove a point of if you have a color coat that is cracked, what do you got to do in order to make that go away? You cannot fog coat a color coat, a crack out of a color coat. It simply doesn't work that way. And when that dries, it's going to be somewhat the color of this wall right here. And it's going to be somewhat of an eyesore, but I could fog that in. But again, I'm, I'm choosing to come back and we're going to mix up a little bit more stucco. And I'm going to go from corner to corner, from this corner to this corner to the top of the uh, fascia board there underneath that window here and on that little eyebrow. That way I'll color coat this entire thing. Can this recrack? I doubt it, not with two layers. But then again, my buddy Andy Davis, he just did a house and he, they called me for the same project and he did the house. He, they had a massive crack. And so he went there and he put a polyurethane caulking in the crack and he used Tanzer mesh, 10 times stronger than this. And he put three, three layers. Two weeks later, and that house recracked. The idea is fiber mesh tape, fiberglass tape is not going to hold a hundred ton home. If it's going to move, it's going to move. And this house is always going to continue to move. And every house here in Alameda is going to continue to move. Even if you went to the shopping center at South Shore, you look at those walls. Those walls are cracked like eggs. And there's been about 10 different stucco guys. I'm pointing this out because I get so many calls around the world, people saying, gee, Kirk, this guy did a brand new color coat and I'm already noticing some cracks. Guys, even if you're an engineering specialist, you cannot determine the ground, you cannot determine things of foundations, and I can go on like Jay said a little while ago for a few more hours, but I'll leave it at that. So it's not always human error that creates these cracks, it's movement. And the more movement, the more cracks. I'll leave you lastly with the house I did in Moraga. I came back um, two months later and they said, gee, Kirk, we got some crack. Well, they had an earth mover there. How did I know? Because I saw all the tracks for the earth mover. Not, it didn't have tires, it had tracks. And I had another situation where they placed rocks as big as cars with another earth mover. This was in 20 years past. And I told both of these uh, folks, gee, your, your ground is moving. That is a 20-ton earth mover, and you're moving boulders the size of cars. So ground movement will cause cracking. Three-story work on hills will cause cracking. There's a lot more reasons. But anyhow, I wanted to point out what causes some of the most, the majority of hairline cracks that you'll get after even a color coat, even after you've hydrated the crap out of these walls. So I'm going to get back and put a little bit of fiber mesh tape over this. And when we come back the next time, I'm going to let this cure a day because I'm, I'm in no hurry. Jason and I are going to re-hit this wall, and I'll show you the completion of it. It's going to look just like it does here, except no flaws in it. Anyway, we'll see you when that time comes. Okay, guys, I forget how many days it's been, but it's been quite a while. Here's my patch right here. It come close, but even if I used white, it wouldn't matter because we're going to color code it anyway. If this was a three or a four story house, I could fog this in, but take me as much time to get a Hudson sprayer, the fog coat, and spend the time to fog this in because the texture matches, the color doesn't. But I don't, I prefer not to uh, fog coat it, instead just recolor it. So what I'm going to do here while Jason mixes, I'm going to spend about 15 minutes and with that 15 minutes I'm going to hydrate this and all I'm going to do is go over and over this wall as it's wet you can see the color difference but what I'm trying to achieve now is unlike when I did the mesh on here I didn't want any water but now I want water I want the base coat this is one solid inch thick 
I want the paper to be wet when I when I'm done for 15 to 20 minutes the paper will be wet and what will happen is it'll take at least a day and a half for this wall to dry out and if I'm doing this myself meaning Jay's gonna film me I need that extra time so I'm gonna continue hosing this down for a good 20 minutes uh, so that when I spread my mud I have all day to mess with it and get my joints right and as I said in my previous video I get three perhaps five emails a day simply on new homeowners they call me and say Kirk I watch a lot of your, your videos you seem to know what you're doing I just had my house color coded and it's got cracks everywhere guys as I pointed out earlier you can go by by the book you can you can put fibers in your cement you could lath it according to code and have it inspected. You could scratch it, allow it to set 48 hours, hydrate it. You could hydrate your brown coat for two to three weeks. You can do everything by the book and sometimes you can still get cracks. It doesn't matter who you are. In fact, if you wanna see how we did all this and the hydration that we used, click right here because we did it only a couple years ago and we still have that video of how we did all the brick work this is brick under here and it shows me hydrating the wall and it actually uh, shows me or exp shows me explaining to the homeowner uh, hydrate it just like I'm doing right here and how do you know when you're done hydrating the wall well you know when you're done if it just keeps falling off it won't soak in anymore then that wall is fully hydrated and hydrating is the most important thing for uh, colors or for a brown coat because it expands the wall and shrinks them and the rain will do that so we want to do it we want to do that before the rain does it anyhow Jay's going to take his 15 minutes to mix and I'm going to continue hosing this down and when we get to the point where we're actually skim coating it I'll show you that all right guys what I did was I spread above this roof and I got this little gable and this area here because everybody knows it's not safe to stand on top of the top rung of a ladder. Now what I'm doing is, I'm feathering into my own work. I stopped it right there. Now, well, some of you may have noticed that this wall is darker when it's wet. And for those of you who watch our stucco channel, and you, you call me and say, I've had a lot of people call me and say, when it rains especially. Hey, I just bought a house. I'm in this country or this part of the world or this state. And every time it gets wet, it darkens. Can you help me out? And I'll always tell them, yeah, I'll help you out. You have a maintenance free finish. It's like a brick. When a brick gets wet, it darkens. That's the beauty of a maintenance free finish. This finish will be on here long after I'm dead. Meaning, yeah, it'll start to discolor in, say, 30, 40 years, but the color won't come off. That's the advantage of a color coat finish. So what I'm doing now is I've saturated this wall for well over an hour, so I'm not worried about joints because I'm working by, by myself until Jay uh, helps me out. But for the sake of explaining this, I prefer him on the camera. I'll tell you guys another thing too of the importance of hydrating stucco. Several years ago, I do a lot of arbitration work. Or I used to do a lot of arbitration. Um, I had the pleasure of going to Alamo to look at a huge four million dollar job and figure out what the heck the contractors did wrong, the stucco guy. And after reviewing the whole house, I came to the conclusion, well, the guys didn't hydrate it until they color coded it. By that time, it was too late. And so the fact that they hydrated it because they had to in order to put a color coat, I've been wetting this down for over an hour and it's still fastly drying. So the fact that on this job in Alamo the, that they wet it because they had to to apply the color, when it rained and right after they did the color, 
it cracked like an egg. So they came back, the same company, and they put fiber mesh tape over every crack. And then they came back and did what I'm doing now. The only problem was they put fiber mesh tape and they put a lot of stucco over it. So now when they did another coat, uh, you could see all these lumps in the wall. And so that was my, that, that's what John Schneider of All About Homes called me for. He said, Kirk, I know you enjoy looking at homes and actually I get a lot of pleasure out of looking at homes and deciding what people did wrong. And keep in mind, I had 14 guys in 89 myself. So even myself and my own guys did things wrong. But I like to understand how things work, especially stucco, my chosen field. So I told them, well, what happened was they did the color coat. They didn't hydrate it until they actually applied the color, which by then, when it all dried, when the color coat dried, it cracked. He says, well, how do you know that for certain? I said, I could tell by the one wall that they left not done. They had one wall under a carport. Didn't have a crack at all. Not one crack. Big, large carport, maybe 40 feet by 40. I said, notice this has no crack. And they said, yeah. And I said, because it never got rained on. So hydration, again, guys, is the key to um, stucco as, as far as not having any cracks. But of course, that's not all of it. There's many, many things that can also cause it. What I'm going to do now is set this down and float my own work. Now, what I do is I bring my existing finish into the finish that I just laid above it. See, you don't want to pull the, uh, the finish that I already spread into here. We want to bring the brand new finish into the floated work. And why did I take this all the way around? I took it all the way around, guys, because I don't want this wall to, I want it to match. It only takes me an extra half hour to hit this wall here. And soon enough, I will be on the ground where I can stand up and get off this ladder. And this is just called a 2030 float finish. Anyway, guys, if you have arbitration work, uh, litigation, I love looking at things and finding out what makes things tick. I've looked at, I don't know, 100 jobs in 30 years, and I figured almost every one of them out just by looking at it without having to open up the walls. That gives me pleasure. I just, uh, I'm pretty good at it. I've learned by years and years of experience, so I enjoy doing that. But the professionals in the field, such as uh, John Schneider, all about homes, he's in Hayward, 536, 6,000. Now, how would I remember that number? Because it's so simple, otherwise I wouldn't remember it. Uh, he's the guy people call for litigation and arbitration. Really nice guy. Anyhow, what I'm going to do here is continue taking it down. We're going to tear this scaffold out, and then we're going to reset up, and I'll show you how we get the bottom here. Now, notice, too, i got a joint here. Jay's going to turn that camera off, and he's going to finish that joint, and I'm going to get it out. Then I'm going to continue with the bottom here, so we'll see you in a second. All right, guys, good to be on the ground. Now what I'm doing is taking it back up right into my new work. Normally a house this size will have uh, oh, three plasters. Make sure we don't lose walls. When I say lose walls, when I first came here, Earlier in that video, now these are mailbox holes. I gotta make sure he knows where they are. So I'm gonna avoid those little guys. Mailbox holes, and plus he's gotta put his um, address back on. Let's see if I could save those mailbox holes. No 
problem. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to take it right to this wall here. And I put so much water on this wall that tape wouldn't stick anyhow to cover that door. That door is not gonna be an issue. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna float this in right here. And when I'm done with the whole thing, I'll show you what it looks like. And again, guys, any of you have a maintenance free finish like this, count your blessings. It's 50 times thicker than paint and it will last forever. Yeah, the color starts to fade depending on your areas or how hot it is, but it never peels off, never. Unless something's done wrong. And yeah, it could crack. Most, most stucco jobs, no matter what, what city, what state you're in, will crack, guys. Uh, so anyhow, what I'm doing now is getting ready to float. Normally I'll have my guys spread in front of me and I'll float everything. I'm gonna set this down, grab my handy dandy new float guys. And again, I'm gonna pull up into my existing, pull up into it. That way there's no joints. When you come to corners, a little bit more difficult. Just takes practice. Get that corner just right here. If you have any excess mud on your float, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spread these out anyhow. So I'm just tapping that to get some of the cement off of here. Your corners, try not to overlap this corner because then I'll have a color differential there. Even though it's uh, the same exact color, uh, when you go corner to corner, it won't show. Okay, get this bottom piece. Corner to corner, guys, that's the way to do some colors. I have gotten lucky and blended in other colors within a color but usually it is what i just said it's kind of luck the only color you can blend in perfectly in the center of a wall is crystal white anyhow that's done now i better move it and we're in the hot sun right now it's about oh 90 95 i can feel myself sweating so uh, that means to me you better move your ass move it and get this joint done Otherwise, one of the cardinal sins of this is never color coat directly in the hot sun. Unless, of course, you've got a real competent crew and you know what you're doing. I kind of know what I'm doing, so I wet these walls in, in excess because I knew I was going to uh, spread and have Jay film this. Anyway, guys, blam, that's it. And when I come to hit this door right here, all I do is dip this float in water, clean it up, and come down here and clean that in a smooth line. No worries as far as damaging that wood. Now that is a nice finish right there. I'm going to go ahead and finish this, finish above the door, and we'll show you the completion. Okay guys, there's the final finish. Uh, my wife would say, boy, you sure to ramble on. And I'd tell her, what are you trying to say? I'm, I talk too much, but there's a lot to cracks. There's a lot to why it cracks. I can go on for hours, but I think I've said enough. Owner come out and said, Kirk, that wasn't necessary. I said, after 500 or so videos, actually it was because this needed to be said because I get so many questions. What better to do it on my own project than somebody else's, so I'm not criticizing their work. Anyway, that's the final result. And yes, it is dark. And when it dries, it will lighten up like a brick. That is why it's maintenance free and lasts a lifetime. Anyhow, guys, my name is Kirk Jason on the camera. And as usual, we thank you for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.